Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to episode 2 of the Week Rust tutorial. In this video, I will be talking about how to use progress bars, conditions, groups, and spell IDs. This, in combination with the first episode, should allow you to set up basically any type of UI you want. And then in the next episode, I will go a little more in-depth about how to modify other people's weak auras once you imported them. But let's just get started with this episode. So the first thing is progress bars. And you can use progress bars for a lot of different things. I have all of my weak auras pulled up here. And you'll probably be able to tell very quickly that I already have two progress bars and they both serve very different purposes. So the first pro progress bar I have is over here in the center. It's this purple pinkish one. And this tracks my bone shield stacks. So when I've, as a blood DK, it's important that I have at least five or more stacks up. And I always want to know the duration because some bosses, for example, only do spell damage. And if I'm taking spell damage, I don't consume those stacks, so I might be in danger of timing out my, my stacks without even noticing. And this just keeps track of that. And then my second progress bar here is actually my resource bar. And that is probably what's most commonly been used for uh, progress bars in the past. But like I said, progress bars have many different uses. So first of all, let's just set up a default resource bar and to get you started with the idea of how to actually use these. And we'll just make a runic power progress bar since I'm on my death knight right now. So we click progress bar, obviously in the new tab. Let's just name it RP bar video. And first thing you always want to do is either go to the display tab or the trigger tab and set up when you want it to show up and how it looks like. For a runic power bar, I don't want there to be any icon. For example, if I was setting up progress bars to kind of keep track of boss abilities or debuffs that go on myself, then maybe I would use the icon just to help me identify the ability that's on me. So we can hide that bar color. Uh, you can either just eyeball this or you can Google uh, runic power color ID. And there's a great wiki page which will give you all of the, the spell IDs and the color IDs. So you're able to just copy paste it into this field here. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to eyeball it real quick, make it blue. And then the background, this is completely up to you. You can keep it the default like dark gray, or you can change it. I like to have the background the same, about the same color as the foreground, but just much darker. Then left and right text, we don't want this to show up, right? Because it's a resource bar. So left text, we don't want right text, we don't want. For a resource bar, if you want the resource amount to actually display, uh, you kind of have to make an additional weak aura because these left and right texts can't really be customized. You can't just change the position of it to the center. So I prefer to just get rid of these. Stacks, it doesn't matter since we're tracking resources. Border, you can play around with this if you wish to. Width, height, I'm just going to leave it at 215. Anchor, I'm just going to leave it center. A frame shot, I prefer to move this up to at least medium. That way, if there's any other weak aura that kind of happens to overlap with it, it's just going to show behind. And then X, Y, we're not going to mess with that since this is just a demonstration. So we have our resource bar looking the way we want it to. Second, we go over to trigger. We go to status. And here we choose power player, this is ourselves, and then power type, I'm just going to choose runic power. Obviously for other classes or their specs, you choose whatever fits your class. You can also choose only if primary, this is if your class or spec has uh, primary and secondary power, and that's just going to hide it, but I usually don't really mess with this. And you can also set it up to only show above a specific power percent, so for example if you're a healer, um, or you're a ranged DPS that kind of has to deal with mana, but most of the time you don't care about how much mana you have, you only want to see a warning when you're like below 50%, for example, you can set it up to only show when you're below 50%. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave this blank. Lastly, we go over to the load tab, and obviously uh, you set it up if you want it in combat, or do you always want to see it? And then player class, I'm going to be selecting Death Knight. And since this is a runic power bar and all of my other specs have runic power, I don't have to select a specific spec. 
But for some classes like Demon Hunter, each spec has a unique power type. There you might have to select the spec as well. And everything else here we can pretty much leave unchecked. So we have our runic power bar. And now if I go and hit a target dummy or I drop a DND here, you can see that it filled up a little bit and then it's slowly decaying. But I have no idea how much resources I actually have because there's no number on it. So for this, we have to go back to weak auras and you create a second weak aura that is going to be a simple text. And this will be called RP bar text. So what this will do is give us the actual number of how much runic power we have. So in the load tab, we just do the same thing as we did for the RP bar. We select death knight In trigger. We go to status power. And then we select runic power, everything else stays the same. And in the display tab, I want to justify this center. Precision doesn't matter since it will just be whole numbers, you can't have 12 and a half runic power. And then the size of it, we'll just eyeball it a little bit to see what kind of fits in here. And I will move it down maybe about negative five. Let's see if that's about in the center. But you can see that the number is kind of dark and still a little bit small. Obviously you can scale these. Um, so the text itself, it's right now it's on an inherited shot, which means that it's most likely defaulted to low or to background. So for this, we're just going to change it to high, increase the size a little bit, maybe to like 16 move it down and there we have it now it's actually looking correct um, the rp bar itself is not over the number so we now have an idea of what our runic power amount actually is obviously this is a very small bar if you wanted to make an actual useful one you'd probably make something similar to what i have in here in the center with a decently sized number decently sized bar and the last thing you can do is customize the texture of the bar if you wish to do so. By default, it will be on the blizzard bar. What you can do is change it to something else if you like the edges to be a little bit more square or the texture to be a more flat color versus more like chrome colored. And you can just mess around with that, see what you prefer the most. Next, moving on to the conditions tab. This is a pretty recent addition to weak auras and it's probably the most useful one. What this allows you to do is change the display settings of a specific weak aura based on conditions. So simply said, it's a if then statement. For example, if I have less than 20 runic power, I want my weak aura to be purple. If I have more than 80 runic power, I want it to be orange. Or if I have less than three seconds on a specific weak aura, I want it to glow. Obviously, there's way more things you can do with this, but those were just simple examples. So just to demonstrate kind of how this works, I will set up my runic power bar to change colors based on the percent of runic power I have available. First, I will add the condition and you will see the if then statement pop up. So if my power percent is, let's say, over or equal to 20, then I want the color of the bar to change to yellow. We can add a second one if my power percent is above or equal to 50%. Then I want my bar color to change to red. And then we can add the last one here real quick. If my power percent is above or equal to 80%, then I can change my bar color to be, just make it green. So now based on how much runic power I actually have, my bar color will change. Uh, if you take a look at this drop down menu, there's a lot of different things you can add with do with it. You can change basically any of the display settings. You can add sound effects, you can change orientation, you can change height, width, color, text size, text shape, uh, basically anything you want to do based on specific conditions. So this is very useful when it comes to adding glows or sound effects that you don't necessarily want to show up whenever the weak aura shows up but rather when there's a specific condition in the weak aura. A very simple example for this is Necrotic Plague on Verimatras. You used to have to run out when there was, I don't know, about three seconds left. 
So even though I want the weak word to show up as soon as I get the debuff, I wanted to make a sound effect only when there's about 3 seconds left on the debuff to alert me to run out. So this conditions tab makes it very easy to set up something like that. Just to demonstrate this quickly, we'll go over to the target dummy, start hitting it a few times, and you can see that it changed to yellow once it was above 20%, and then once we get over 50%, it changes to red, and once we go over 80%, it changes to green. So you can add sound effects, you can set this up uh, very easily for any type of weak aura, and like I said, there's a lot of customization, and this does not apply only to progress bars. You can customize simple text weak auras, icons, and... Uh, models so you can make them change shape size basically anything you want based on specific conditions next moving on to groups because if you want to make your own weak aura set it is likely that you will have to set up a group and that can be a dynamic group or a static group which is in weak aura is just called a regular group and in my weak aura sets you can immediately see that i have both of these types my set in the center which if i click on it um, it will show up. This is a static group. And static groups just allow you to put weak auras in it, and wherever the weak aura itself is placed, that's where it will show up. So I don't want my weak auras to always show up in different places. And in this center scenario, for example, I have two bars stacked on top of each other, some, some text weak auras, and then a little icon weak aura. Now, whenever these pop up, they will always appear in the same group. So I made this group very simply. You simply click uh, on new, group, this will create the group, you name it, and then whatever weak words you want, you can just drag straight into the group. And this will make it so they retain their original position. So I have my IBF in the very center, but if I was to move it off to the side, then my bloodlust icon right in the center, whenever these popped up, they would appear in the spots you see them now. However, my other weak auras sets, which you can see here, these are my active cooldowns. I will probably not have all of these active at the same time. So I want them to always show up next to my character. And for this, I will use a dynamic group. So dynamic groups allow you to add weak auras to it that will always pop up starting in the same position. So now if I change these two weak auras that I just uh, presented here, Change their display settings, if you want them to start in the same spot, they need to have the same X and Y offset. After that, you just go back to the group, you click on the group settings, and here you can customize how you want them to show up. Do you want them to grow up, down, left, right, uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, there's a lot of different options here. We'll just have it grow right, so that means that the first weak word to pop up will appear on the left hand side, and any subsequent weak auras will appear to the right of it. The spacing, you can mess around with that, just the space between the weak auras. Stagger, this is only useful pretty much if you're trying to make weak auras that kind of appear in a circle around you. But if you just want them to line up nicely, I don't really mess with stagger. Border, we're just going to ignore that for now, but you can obviously set up a border if you want your weak auras to appear within one. And then the X and Y offset, this is just where you want it to default to. So now if I was to press IBF and then get Bloodlust or Heroism, then my IBF would appear first, right where the anchor is, and then Heroism or Bloodlust would appear to the right of it. So these uh, settings and the way they're actually positioned in the preview have basically nothing to do with the order. Rather, they will be sorted based on whenever they appear. The last thing I want to quickly mention that is particularly useful when making weak auras is how to get the spell IDs of the abilities or spells that you're trying to make a weak aura for very easily. There's essentially three ways. If you use LVI, then you just go into the LVI settings, go to tooltip, and enable spell slash item IDs. If you have this enabled, whenever you hover over an ability, they should show the spell ID. So you can see that I have the composing aura here. And if I hover over it, a number will show up at the bottom. And that number is the spell ID of this uh, aura. So if I just paste it into weak auras whenever making a new one, let's just go over to the IBF one we created last time. If I go to aura name and just type in this number, it will automatically know the spell that I'm talking about. 
The second way, if you don't use LVI, then you can install an add-on called ID Tip. And this does essentially the same thing once you have it enabled. If you hover over any ability or debuff, it will give you the spell ID of the debuff or ability in question. And then the third way, which I recommend if you're doing like boss abilities, is go to Wowhead, look up the ability name, and then in the URL bar, the number that is towards the end of the line, it will have something like spell equals to and then give you a number. That number is the spell ID of the spell in question. So if you're making a boss weak aura set where you obviously can't just hover over boss abilities because you haven't done the encounter yet, you just go to Wowhead, uh, search it up, and then you can copy and paste those into the game very easily. Thank you so much for watching episode 2 of the weak aura's tutorial. And this video in combination with episode 1 should allow you to make your own weak aura sets for any class and spec in the game. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.